On 28 September 2005, at 1.41 p.m., I drove solar car Nuna 3 over the finish line of the World Solar Challenge in Australia. <laughs> Thank you. Our team became world champion solar car racing, and for me, it was the biggest kick of my life. That finish line was for me a new beginning, a beginning of a world full of opportunities. I experienced what you can achieve with a group of like-minded people, sustainable energy, and electric driving. To drive through 3,000 kilometers of desert in a record-breaking time without using a single drop of petrol, for me, that was the ultimate feeling of freedom. And I believe we can all have that feeling of freedom. The freedom to follow our own path. The freedom to create new opportunities. The freedom to improve our world. How come we are not all driving electric vehicles? Did you know that in 1897, New York City had a fleet of electric taxis? Why is it that more than 100 years later, we are still driving around in fuel slurping vehicles? What is keeping us from that freedom? First of all, three things. First of all, oil addiction. We are addicted to oil. At this moment, we use more oil than is being discovered in new wells. And the energy demand is only increasing. We are so busy thinking about today instead of thinking about tomorrow. And we are totally dependent on oil producing companies and countries. And when you depend on someone else, you will not win. That is what we experienced during the World Solar Challenge of 2007. We were driving from Tennant Creek to Alice Springs in Australia. And the Belgian team was right behind us. They were determined to take over the lead. And they were listening to our radio communication. Every time we accelerated, they did the same. So we came up with a sneaky strategy to beat them with their own game. We said, mission control to Nuna 4. We are increasing speed to 120 kilometers an hour. But <laughs> we stayed at 100 kilometers an hour. The Belgian team did exactly as we expected. They increased their speed using more energy per kilometer, and they lost. That is what happens if you depend on someone else's strategy. And that is what will happen if we remain addicted to oil. Second, the bureaucratic mindset. I bought this used uh, scooter on the internet, electric scooter, four months ago. And we live on the second floor, so I wanted a charging pole. Because 30 meters of hanging cable out the window is not an option. That's what my neighbor thought when she tripped over the ca cable at night. So, my local government told me that I needed seven different permits for a poll. Seven. They ended the letter with, do not bother. It's not likely you will get these permits. We have no policy for this, so we are not going to deal with it. Third, the obstacle thinkers. People will say things like, I've read that the Hama is far more sustainable than a Prius. Or, Electric power still comes from a coal power plant, for the, so for the environment, it doesn't matter. People also say, if the batteries do not improve, electric driving is not going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, electric driving is about new opportunities. Electric driving is about the freedom of choice. Electric driving is about a new mindset. It's not about how far a vehicle can go, it's about how far you need to go. I'm a pretty average guy in terms of my commute to work. On average, people in the Netherlands live 20 kilometers from their office, and it takes them 30 minutes to drive to there. But when I take this electric scooter, it takes me the same amount of time, only it saves me up to 90 euros of fuel cost per month. How did I get around the charging pole problem? I found an outlet in the basement at my office, and that's where I charge. The electric driving is the opportunity for us to start driving energy-efficient vehicles. 87% of the Dutch population driving to work is driving on their own. Only one person per car. That is an outrageous waste of energy. 
It means we need 1,000 kilograms just to move 75 kilograms. So people, do we really need better batteries? I say we need to lighten up, improve aerodynamics, and design our vehicles so they fit us like a glove. It's like with the invention of the first car, back when people were used to horse and wagon. The first car was designed to look like such a wagon, because people were used to them. And it took a while before cars developed their own style. And now it's exactly the same with electric cars. We keep comparing electric cars with conventional automobiles. We even invent sounds for them, because we are not used to silent cars. We need to appreciate electric, the electric car as a unique way of transport, with its own characteristics. Electric cars can make us energy independent. They are the way to make us energy independent. With a conventional car, you can only use a few types of fuel. Most of them are non-renewable fossil fuels. But when we drive electric cars, we can choose from a dozen energy sources. We can choose like coal power. We can choose from renewable energy sources, like wind energy. We can even choose to produce that energy on our own rooftop with solar power. So people, our challenge is to generate enough energy on our own and making use of it in the most efficient way. Electric driving and sustainable energy made our team win. It can make all of us win. Electric driving enables us to make our own choices, to become energy independent. Electric driving gives us the freedom, the freedom to follow our own path, the freedom to create new opportunities, the freedom to improve our world. Thank you.